Welcome to the All Out Leadership Podcast, hosted by Pastor Eric Lawson, where each episode is uniquely designed to help you live all out by bringing you practical leadership from a biblical perspective delivered in 10 minutes or less. So whether you're a business leader, serving in ministry, or simply looking to grow in your leadership, this podcast is for you. Before we dive into this week's topic, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the show notes at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast. And while you're at it, feel free to share the content on social media. Now, let's join Pastor Eric for this week's conversation. Welcome to another edition of the All Out Leadership Podcast. We're talking about Absalom. You might be going, oh my gosh, am I an Absalom? (laughs) Like, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, I don't want to be that girl. So am I. So I'm going to give you some warning signs that you could kind of use as a personal checklist to see whether or not you're an Absalom. Or maybe you got an Absalom on your team. And you're just kind of wondering, are they, are they not? I don't know. Here's a couple things we can go through. So let's just go through a couple things that Absalom did to steal the hearts of people. And you can kind of take a self-inventory. Second Samuel 15. After it happened, Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. If you build your brand through charades rather than substance, then you might be an Absalom. Absalom was focused on the exterior. He was focused on his image. He was focused on his brand. Uh, He sent other people to say good things about me. Hey, be sure to say, you know, this and hey, make sure that they know. Look, if you have to get the credit for everything, that that's not the right spirit. And so that's just a one little indicator uh, that there's a little bit of an Absalom spirit that's maybe lurking there in the dark. Second Samuel 15, verse 2, we continue. Now, Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. It tells me he was aggressive. He was a hard worker. He was early to bed, early to rise, early bird gets the worm. So he had some great leadership principles going. And so it was whenever anyone who had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision, the Absalom would call to him and say, what city are you from? And he would say, well, your servant is from such and such a tribe. Secondly, You attract disgruntled people. Absalom had the ability to find disgruntled people. If people always seem to just come to you with complaints, I don't know why we do this. And why did they change that? And why do we got to do this? Whether it's a job or a church or you're volunteering somewhere in the kids ministry, anywhere. If people always come to you with their complaints, that is actually a subtle sign that you have a little bit of an Absalom spirit. Because People know that they can go to you with their complaints and you're going to sympathize. You're going to empathize with them. Look, people don't go to people who don't empathize with their complaints. If you'll stop being a trash can, people will stop giving you your trash, their trash. So here's what I've always done. Uh, When somebody comes to me, I just stop them in their tracks and go, okay, now to me, uh, it sounds like maybe you're about to gossip. Or, hey, have you gone to that person and talked to them about this? Because, you know, the Bible says uh, if your brother offends you, go to them. I shut it down right away. (laughs) And now, if it's a complaint about something that I'm over, I want to hear that. That's entirely different. But if they're complaining about somebody else, another leader. um, Now, as the pastor, I want to hear what anybody says about anybody on my team because that's just smart. And that will be in a different podcast we'll get to next week. (laughs) All right. But if you just find that you continually are a trash can and everybody seems to be dumping everything about the leader on you, then that is an indication that there's just some vibe that you're sending out. Hey, tell me about what you're disgruntled about. And somehow you find some kind of enjoyment in that. People rarely come to me to complain about a leader because they know I'm not going to put up with it. And I don't care about you undermining somebody else. Now I care. I'm going to stop that, but I'm not a trash can. And so just keep that in mind. Now, Absalom would say, look, your case is good. It's right. But man, there's no deputy of the king to hear you. When they would come to him, he would validate their frustration. He would go, well, yeah, you know, you're right. I I disagree with that policy when they make it. Yeah, you know, I don't know why they do that either. You know, that doesn't make, you know, the old policy, you know, our old boss, you know, man, the old leader, you know, that old pastor, oh, you know, that other. And they're just kind of there subtly adding fuel to the fire. Now, there was a man named 
Ayathopel, and he was uh, a primary advisor to David. What we also see is Absalom going after someone who else was disgruntled. Disgruntled, verse 12 of chapter 15. Then Absalom sent for Ayathopel, the Gileadite, David's counselor from his city, uh, from Gilath, and when he arrived, uh, when he offered sacrifices. And so the conspiracy grew stronger, for the people with Absalom continually increased in number, and Absalom agreed, Absalom agreed with their complaints. So what we see is Absalom's, he just has this agreement, and he's drawing other disgruntled people with him. Now, why am I highlighting Hyathopal? Well, because he was disgruntled, because his granddaughter was Bathsheba, and David committed adultery with Bathsheba and then had his you know, grandson-in-law murdered, Uriah. So there was this fuel that was simmering underneath, and Absalom knew that, and he pulled that disgruntled person to be part of his team. You'll often find these divisions that take place inside of organizations. It's really a group of disgruntled people that somebody was able to capitalize on or monopolize on uh, and take advantage of uh, to turn uh, a culture the wrong way. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, and everyone who has any suit or cause would come to me, then I would give him justice. If you subtly imply you could do a better job than so-and-so, then that's an Absalom spirit. Well, you know, if I was in charge, or you know, I, I, I know, I know, I just think that's a terrible idea. You know what I would do? Like, if you're making those statements, you're in very dangerous ground because you're subtly undermining leaders. Now, uh, I'm not talking about blind leadership. I'm not just talking again about not having a voice. And we're, we're going to talk about that in the next podcast. You know, there's a place to ask questions. There's a place to even challenge certain ideas. But that's behind closed doors, not public doors. It's with the right people, not the wrong people. And so it was, moreover, that when anyone came near to bow down to him, that he would put out his hand, take it, and kiss him. In this manner, Absalom acted toward all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men. If you kiss up, to others you wouldn't even normally be friends with. That's the spirit of Absalom. Absalom's a prince. He's not associating with the everyday common people, but he comes across like, hey, I'm everybody's best friend. I'm one of you. It's a politician's favorite tactics. You go talk to farmers. Hey, uh, my, my grandfather was a farmer. You go talk to people in the steel country. My great uncle was worked in the steel. You know, you go to prisons. Hey, I'm a crook. So like you just go and try to identify with your audiences. That was funny. <laughs> All right. So if you're continually finding that you're just kissing up to other people that you wouldn't even want to be friends with, there's an ulterior motive. And that's potentially part of what makes an Absalom spirit. Well, hopefully you'll find some of these warning signs helpful to guard yourself and to guard your culture against the spirit of Absalom. See you next week. Thank you for joining us on the All Out Leadership Podcast. We hope you gain new biblical insight that challenged you to grow in your leadership. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we would love your help in getting the content out farther. You can help by subscribing to the podcast at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast and telling others about it. Next week, Pastor Eric will be back with another episode. So until then, we hope you have a great week being an all out leader.